Hey guys, another Geek123 here, and today we are going to be talking about a franchise I've pretty much been in love with while growing up, which is Scooby Doo. Yes, maybe as the years have passed from when I was 6, I don't really check out the show as much as I used to, but I really still love this property from the original 60s show to the Scooby Doo property I grew up with, which is What's New Scooby Doo, to the Mystery Inc. show that took the property to a whole new level until a certain show came out, and finally the live action movies, which yes, only half of them are good but the Scooby-Doo movies are things I loved watching up while growing up with, which now results in me talking about the newest staple in the Scooby-Doo movies, which is the Scoob movie. Scoob is a CG animated comedy film that released this year, which yes, does also include mystery in it, because well, it's mostly about the Mystery Inc. The film is produced by Warner Bros Animation Group, and it's set up to a somewhat hand barbera cinematic universe. The film overall is directed by Tony Sevon, who has worked on a fair amount of Hanna-Barbera properties, such as being a producer on the Duck Dodgers series, being part of the animation department for Space Jam, being a producer for some Tom and Jerry media, even has been a producer on some of the directed DVD Scooby-Doo films. The film was also written by four people, but overall the film's story is created by Matt Liberman, A. Podell, and Jonathan E. Stewart. The voices of the Mystery Inc. feature Will Forte as Shaggy, Gina Rodriguez as Velma, Zac Efron as Fred, Amanda Southfield as Daphne and Frank Willard as Scooby-Doo, who yes is the only voice actor of the original cast to reprise their role, and well I'll get into that a little bit more later on in the video. Other voice actors in this film feature Mark Wahlberg as Blue Falcon, Jason Isaacs as Dick Dacidly, Kersey Clemens as Dee Dee Skies, Ken Jeong as Dynamo, and Tracy Morgan as Captain Caveman. The movie is a full on reboot of the Scooby Doo series, so no it's not a continuation of other Scooby Doo cartoons or the live action films as I've heard other people claim, however they do make many callbacks to the past series in this movie. Plans for this film began in June of 2014 when Warner Bros announced that they were planning on rebooting the Scooby Doo series with a big screen animated film. Sevon was then hired to direct in August 2015 with Dax Shepard being brought on to co-direct in September of 2016. However, in October 2018, Shepard left the project. Then in March 2019, most of the cast was hired. The overall animation on this project was provided by Real FX Animation Studios. Scoob then was released digitally through the on demand service instead of cinemas on May 15th of this year. This was because the film was initially meant to be in cinemas on the same day, but that couldn't happen due to the current state of the world. Finally, now this has led to me and Kokuja, my fellow host on Web Nostalgia, watch this film around the 16th a day after the film released. And now it's time for me to give my own review on the film, then pass the mic over to Gokuja to hear his thoughts on the film before I close off the video. So yeah, essentially think of this as a mini web nostalgia video. So anyways, let's get into my own review of the film. Quickly before I get into this film, I just want to say one thing. This film is mediocre to me. My first thing to mention about this film is that from the past two decades of film being a massive growth with superhero films including the Avengers films in the MCU and even a fair few DC films like the Dark Knight series and this is probably the reason why studios like Warner Bros want to create a Hanna-Barbera type universe since this is also a reason the company tried to create the worlds of DC which already started off as the failed DCEU. Overall from this point this is why Scoob is mostly awkward essentially being out of touch with, with other Scooby Doo properties in different ways. Scoob's first problem comes from it at first looking like a high featured adaptation of the classic TV show essentially being a basic to basic reboot but from what we started to notice from promotions of the film and now the release of the film that's actually not just a revival of Scooby Doo it's now also reviving the characters friends that don't really relate to the cartoon and to show the change in the tone of the franchise and well to also set up a brand new universe that mostly will consist of characters the current generations and heck even people my own age haven't even heard of the characters that are in this film that show this are blue falcon well actually blue falcon's son Dynamo and Dee Dee Skies, who is now part of the Blue Falcon team for some reason. Join forces with the gang, while we have Dick Dastardly from Rocky Races being up against the gang, while we have a small role of Captain Caveman fighting some of our characters. These characters as a whole are perfectly fine, and maybe if you just wanted a Blue Falcon and Dynamo be implemented in this, it could have been totally fine. Maybe it could have worked as a Scooby Doo meets superhero type property. However, all of these characters are very different resulting in our four writers of the film mostly having a hard time create a story to fit them all in and well again resulting in something that doesn't feel like Scooby-Doo. The show this doesn't really feel like Scooby-Doo, let's have a look back at when it debuted in 1969. The popular Saturday morning cartoon created a kind of corny teen detective template 
put on a groovy comedic twist on old Nancy Drew style mysteries. Each week Sean V's teens and a talking dog looking into supernatural clues, resulting in them unmasking different villains. However now here the Mystery Inc, Shaggy played by Will Forte, Fred played by Zac Efron, Daphne played by Amanda Seffield, Velma played by Gina Rodquez, Velma played by Regina Rodrez, and Scooby played by Frank Weller, and now belong to this generation, which has changed the characters a little. For example, these days marijuana has been legalised in most US states, but yet, the classic example of being a stoner shaggy, no longer feels that type of figure, even with him growing up near Venice Beach, shown from the beginning of the film. Meanwhile, the rest of the film is now in the future, which to be honest, I think has handled it pretty well with the futuristic tone, since this future doesn't really seem like it's over the top like other films made it in the past. Moving on a little, Simon Cowell also makes a brief appearance in this film a few times. There was a very odd reason why the gang temporarily split as Fred, Daphne and Velma branch out to be their own new version of Mystery Inc, which then leads to the plot barely making some sense from scene to scene in my own opinion. Although there is plenty of energy in these scenes which make it enjoyable watching it the first time and will make kids probably enjoy it each time they watch the film. And this is from the decent new CG animation. But just an extra point to me, if you watch the original like testing of this new version of animation with Scooby-Doo, uh, there's a test where we see a younger Shaggy for some reason, where the younger Scooby meet the Blue Falcon and that animation was totally different. But in the end of the day, this animation was great to me. However, not all of this reimagining of this world and characters are bad. The big thing I like with the reimagination in character wise is Dick Dastardly, who used to be the pathetic high tech mastermind who is now, yeah, at times dumb, but mostly kind of enjoyable evil character to see be put up against our characters in this film. The connection of putting him as a villain is also fairly well done from his Doug Muttley, who we eventually see in the story. Overall, Dastardly's plan involves unleashing Serbius, the mythical three-headed dog who guards the underworld, which he does to get his dog back from failed experiments and, well, also just get some gold from the underworld. Which, yeah, the plan does sound very stupid, and not that good, but still, I think they have reimagined this character very well. Other from the characters writing and how the characters feel, I really want to quickly comment about the overall voice acting situation. It's been shown that the Scooby Doo voice actors that have played the main roles over the years have been replaced without their own knowledge by Warner Bros. to have a brand new big named cast, proved by Matthew Lillard, my personal favourite person to play Shaggy's comments, and Daphne's voice actress as well, tweeting a few things about it. Well honestly I think the voice acting was hit or miss overall, with capturing the characters voices. In my opinion I think Velma's, Daphne's, Scooby's, Blue Falcon's, Dynamut's, Captain Caveman's and Dick Dastley's voices were perfectly well done in my own opinion, or mostly as good. While I think Shaggy's, Fred's, Dee Dee's and other voices weren't that well done in this film, especially Will Forte. I know I'm being a bit biased here because uh, Matthew Lillard's my favourite Shaggy, but honestly I just did not really like this version of Shaggy's voice. Overall again, this is a bad time for everything including cinema and honestly even though I overall find this movie mediocre, I am thankful for it releasing, giving us a new movie to check out and entertain us a little. I know I'm not a parent, but I think they must be grateful for this film to come out as well, to distract their kids for 90 minutes and will be more time as well if they're new Scooby Doo fans. I'm honestly looking forward to see where this universe goes in the future and hope the live action Tom and Jerry film we are getting at the end of the year is better because I have gave this movie a bad rap but I kind of think it's a step in the right direction for how Warner Bros want to set up a universe little to me. Now it's time to hand over the mic to go Kuja to see his thoughts on the film. Thank you for that Sean, so essentially Sean said the movie was quite mediocre. So in order for us to validate this point and put it to rest, we have to first look into why it was bad. So get your Velma glasses, Fred's Ascot and your favourite sandwich as I cover my segment of the Scoob Review. So if you don't already know, I am a massive fan of Hanna-Barbera cartoons and always have been. A big fan of Scooby-Doo ever since I was little. Shows such as The Flintstones, The Jetsons and even half of the 20 to 30 ripoffs of Scooby-Doo always fascinated me. Sure, the animation of Scooby-Doo in the 60s is dated now, you actually still get the nostalgic feeling for it. Something I didn't really feel with Scoob. Scoob isn't a Scooby-Doo movie. It isn't a classic such as Zombie Island, Cyber Chase and other such films from the late 90s to early 2000s of Scooby-Doo. It is instead a forced over the top condescending superhero movie which makes Batman vs Superman look like a good movie. Right, I know that comment's gonna stir some people in the comments, but that's how the movie portrays itself so please don't have a problem. 
I'm not gonna lie, I was legit looking forward to this movie. Seeing most of the big cast reunited from the past three incarnations. Pardon me. No, not you. But instead we didn't get this. The cast was only big celebrities, and by big I mean this scene where I legit quoted to another Geek123 or Sean that it was Zac Efron looking over his full career and imagining being 17 again. But in all seriousness, there are only three good casting choices. Velma, Dick Dastardly, and the traditional Frank Welker reprising his role as Scooby-Doo. However good his performance was in this movie, however, it didn't save it from the voice acting. However, it didn't save it. The voices sound so lifeless, like they were just forced to read this script, like they didn't care. I legit feel sorry for Matthew Lillard, who was recast with Will Forte. He legitimately sounds like a squeaky kid trying to act like a teenager. Just give Lillard the job back, for God's sake. And let the cast from, I don't know, the best Scooby-Doo incarnation return. <coughs> Mr. Incorporated. I honestly don't know what the execs were honestly thinking with this. Going off this, however, the plot, the plot, the plot. Something that I didn't really understand. It's like they thought, hey men, what do you want us to do to put in this movie? Well, let's put in Scooby-Doo in a movie titled Scoob. But it has nothing to do with Scooby. And hype it up from the start. And introduce tons of Hanna-Barbera characters. And make the movie confusing as fuck. Whilst we try to cram in a horrible breakup between the main characters, Shaggy and Scooby. God, at this point I take Shaggy and Scooby-Doo get a clue over this any day. Ouch, and that one really burned. Also, Velma, Fred and Daphne are irrelevant, so you may as well just watch Get A Clue if you want some solo mysteries with Scooby and Shaggy. Dick Dastardly legit looks excellent, but it's what we saw almost 50 to 60 years ago. And there is honestly no modernization to his character whatsoever. And there's a minion cash cow, literally with the robots. Boy Warner, you really stoop low, like real low. Along with the subcontextual money marketing schemes in this movie with advertising Netflix and for some reason Tinder, isn't this movie for six-year-olds? They had so many chances to reference original 2002 Scooby-Doo live action, but they didn't choose to do this. Most of the references gave me an eye roll, not a laugh like something such as Sonic did. And I was expecting Scoob to be much more of a better movie than Sonic, but it sure as hell wasn't. The only thing I can give this movie for is the classic sound effects and the intro from the start, which brung back memories. I legit wish they went with the original plans for this movie, even if it was going to be a wacky races movie. I would have preferred it over this movie. So confusing and contradictory that it's probably the first thing in Scooby-Doo I haven't been able to pick up on. And I saw all the What's New Scooby-Doo movies until they changed to the more modern aesthetic. I've tried to fit this all into a one point summary. But just know this movie doesn't deserve any praise. It's a cash cow. Something that was simply made not to impress old fans but to create new ones who don't understand the original source material. There isn't even any classic lines uttered such as jinkies or zoinks. And the only thing is that Wacky Races would have made more sense as a crossover, as it always had potential to actually span off the Hanna-Barbera universe. It would have been such a better movie. So what would I recommend as something to replace this? And would I recommend this movie? Well, I know it might seem too over the top nowadays and not PC enough, but if you want to see something more originally grounded and with an excellent voice cast and something that follows the Scooby-Doo formula, I recommend Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. A more neat and gritty show which is more superior to anything we have ever got. Or if you just want a plain and simple, straight to the point Scooby-Doo, I recommend Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. Both shows are excellent in their own way and are straight up continuations or introductions to the Scooby-Doo franchise. Something Scoob is not. So would I advise paying 13 to 14 pounds rental for this? Simple answer, no. There is so much better media of the Scooby-Doo franchise, movie-wise, that you can watch or rewatch, such as Zombie Island and the other early 2000s movies which have a better overarching mystery and are actually really entertaining. I would highly recommend these over Scoob any day. And I hope we will get to see another attempt at this, as I would love another movie on par with Zombie Island or Mystery Incorporated. Okay, thank you another Geek123 for having me on to explain the flaws and problems with this movie. It's time for me to get back to watching anime and making videos. See you all later, and peace. Alrighty then, thank you so much Gokuja for giving your thoughts on this movie. And honestly, I mostly agree with them points. Overall, this film isn't Scooby-Doo as I said in my review, and 
yeah, there's just not much to say. This film mediocre compared to other Scooby Doo properties we have seen in the past as an overall. And honestly, this just leads me down to asking about your guys' thoughts. Do you find this film good or bad? Do you agree with us or? Uh, just comment down below your general thoughts about this film if you have seen it yet. And that also leads down to if you like the video, please like. If you dislike the video, please dislike. It gives me feedback to improve. And overall, please comment down below your overall thoughts about the video as a whole. Did you think there was parts that need improving or not? And also, yeah, if you have watched this content for a while now and have not yet subscribed, please do, it would make my day. And finally, if you're looking for a 1-10 to 10 minute video being edited for you, please head over to my Fiverr, the link is always down below. I honestly want to create some content for you guys, at a very reasonable price. So thank you guys so much for watching, and peace. Scooby's just a fucking modernised version of fucking... Minions now. Listen!